Oh, hi, it's me again, Dawn. I'm here at Always in Stitches in Noblesville, Indiana. And today I'm gonna to introduce you to punch needle or needle punch. Either way is correct. Some people call it punch needle, some people call it needle punch. We're gonna call it punch needle because that's what the sign says. I've been working on this sign now for a little while and uh, I thought, well, before I get it all completed, I thought I'd show you guys a little bit about how to do it. Of all the crafts that I do and of all the things that I love to do, needle punch probably takes the least amount of equipment. And so that's really good. If you want to invest in a, in a fairly inexpensive, fun craft, needle punch is the way to go. All you need is your surface, which most patterns come pre-printed right on the weaver's cloth. So when you buy a pattern, you already have it on there, but you very easily can buy the fabric. We sell it here by the bolt. You can uh, buy a yardage of it. Um, and you can print your own patterns on with like a light box, but you always wanna make sure that you're printing it backwards. So when I search for patterns, you know, I have tons of wool patterns and they make the best needle punch patterns. Anything that is wool applique can be needle punched. So you kind of get double the amount of uh, use out of your patterns when you can incorporate other patterns into the needle punch. It's a beautiful texture and all it is is little teeny weeny loops. And it's made with this punch, ultra punch tool. We have these here, of course. Comes in a little kit. It comes with uh, this. I don't know if you can see that or not, but this is the needle threader. And it's important that you keep track of it. And all you have here is this little white piece of paper. I'm thinking about probably painting mine with nail polish or putting marker on it or something to make it really stand out so that I don't lose it because that's probably my biggest fear is to lose this. But you know what? We can know, you can always buy another one here at Always in Stitches, so that's a good thing. Now, what I'm gonna show you to do is, a whip. let's go through the equipment a little bit more. Got these scissors. Now you don't have to have the bent kind, but they're super, super nice for uh, when you wanna get real close to the surface. And that, that bend in those scissors just gets real close to the surface. We have these here, of course, too. I'm not gonna show you anything that you can't buy here at Always in Stitches because we are the place to come for all your crafting needs. All your fiber needs, all your fabric needs. This is the floss I'm using. DMC, just regular, good old DMC floss. And what, this is eight skeins of floss. Can you believe that? And so because it's so cumbersome to pull it out and it gets tangled up, I just take a piece of cardboard and I just wrap mine around so that I can get it off super easy. Because when I'm, stick, when I'm uh, punching, I wanna punch. I don't wanna be messing with my floss. And my project, I don't know, it's about 32 inches. So I'm just gonna take like two strands. So like maybe 70, well, yeah, 70 inches or so. You don't wanna get it so long that it tangles up on you because knots are your worst enemy. And then I'm gonna separate it because I'm not using six strands and you know DMC floss comes in six strands. I'm gonna split it and do it three strands. So I'm just gonna take three strands, so half and half. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna make sure this is nice and straight and dangling down. I'm just gonna take my finger, I'm just gonna run it down. I'm gonna let one of my three strands and one of my three strands over here and then just keep running my finger letting it untangle on its own and see how it's just twisting around and it's not getting tangled and now i have a big long piece that's just three strands see that all right now 
this is the fun part. I'm going to take this itty bitty needle threader. And can you see that there is a hole in my needle? My needle is like a straw. It's hollow all the way through. And I'm going to slide my needle threader right into that straw needle, that needle that looks like a straw. Then I'm going to take the end of my three strands of floss and I'm going to thread it right through that needle threader. Now at the end of this needle threader is a little twist and you, it catches your thread and holds your thread in there for you. Can you see it's not falling out? That little bitty twist really helps because when you're pulling it through the straw of the needle, you don't want that to slip out, okay? So it catches it and then once you get it through the needle, you just take that out. Then there's a second part to this. And can you see that little hole right there in the eye of the needle? I'm going to, on the rounded side, there's a flat side to the needle, kind of a beveled edge. And then there's a rounded side. And on the rounded side, I'm going to poke my needle threader through there again. I'm going to thread and pull that to the end so it holds it there and just bring it through that eye. Now that was super easy. All right. Then I'm going to lay this where I know I can find it. Right there. Don't let me forget, Peter. It's right there. Okay. Peter's our uh, handy dandy computer camera guy. And he's looking very sharp today. He's got a nice suit on. Maybe uh, he'll turn the camera around sooner or later. Now, for this, I had to make my own frame because this is a huge project. Let me tell you, when I say huge project, I mean this is a huge project. This is about, oh, I'd say a good 10 and a half inches by about 32 inches. And I'm going to cover all this area with this uh, tan color. This is going to be my background. Now you're looking at the back of my project, okay? It doesn't look all that fancy schmancy. But if I was just working on a project that was smaller, most needle punch projects are smaller. We have these set of hoops. Now these aren't like regular embroidery hoops, okay? They have legs, and let me just show you the diagram here. There's a small hoop and a larger hoop. And you have these legs, and what it is, is it brings your hoop up off of the surface. Because if you're punching onto the table, you're not going to leave a little loop at the end. You're just going to be punching a bunch of holes in your table. That's not a good thing, okay? Because that's going to mess you up. You might have a pretty pattern on your table, but I don't think that's what you want. So, you put the hoops together, and the hoops have a locking system. Oh, I can't get this one out because it's... Well, trust me, there's a little locking system inside the middle of the hoop. It's kind of a tongue and groove kind of thing where they fit in. And when you put your fabric in, you want it to be tight as a drum. You don't want any uh, give. You want it really, really tight so that when you punch, the fibers of the fabric, the weaver's cloth, will tighten up against that uh, hoop uh, loop that you're leaving with the needle and keep it in place, okay? So I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna get this around and I'm just gonna use the table here and you can see there's no table underneath me. Can they see that, Peter? Uh -huh. There's no table underneath me, there's just free air. And I'm gonna bring my needle and I'm gonna make sure that my thread is not tangled up. It's got a nice, smooth thread tension. And I'm going to bring my needle down into my weaver's cloth and I'm just going to poke. Now the beveled edge of the needle is towards me so that when I punch the thread is following the needle. You don't want to go against the thread 
Remember the thread is threaded through the eye of the rounded edge. So the rounded edge will follow the beveled edge. So the beveled edge is always going to be pointing to me. Now when the needle is down in the cloth, how can you tell which is the beveled edge and which is the round edge? Well, the people who made the needle, they're super smart. And see where the needle gauge is? This is how you uh, make the loops bigger. One makes a little tiny loop, two makes it a little bigger, three. And how you do that is, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this little silver dot. It's a little post. See that? And you put that down in, and whatever number you slide that little post into, that's how big your um, loop is going to be. So that was really, really easy to change. All right? So now, if I have my thumb right below that gauge, that line of gauges, then I know the beveled side of my needle is towards me, if I always keep my thumb towards me. Okay, I'm going to pull my thread so there's just maybe about a half an inch of thread. I'm going to push my needle down into the surface. Can you see real good, Peter? Uh -huh. Okay, I'm going to move my hand there. And I'm just going to start punching. And I'm going to lift that needle up until I can just go maybe one or two threads over. And I'm just going to poke. This is all I'm doing. And I'm going to fill this whole area in with a color. It's kind of like paint by number, only it's punch by number, and there's no numbers. So that doesn't make any sense, does it? Punch by color. How about if we say it that way? Because you're just filling in the area with the colors using little bitty loops on the front. So I'm working from the back. And when I get to the area where I'm now, I'm going to have to go that way. So I'm not going to turn my project because it would be very cumbersome for me. So I'm going to turn my gauges. So now my beveled edge is here going towards where I'm working and my rounded edge is to the back and I'm just going to keep on going. As long as I know where my beveled edge is, I can work sideways this way. Now, if it's, if it's in a round hoop and it's a small project, you certainly could just turn your work because it is much easier to punch coming towards yourself than it is to go sideways. And when I'm punching, I'm just say, staying a needle's width away. So however thick my needle is, that's kind of how far away I am from the last row of stitches. Now I start out by outlining all my areas. So when I first started this project, I outlined all the letters and then filled in. Now let's say, for instance, you get to a place and you pull out and look, it pulls a bunch of way out. Do not cry. Do not throw a temper tantrum. Just pull your thread really close back down into the needle and just start punching again. Look at that. See how easy that was? Now, don't get your finger caught. Don't get your elbow caught on the thread. The thread needs to stay free. Look, I've got it caught over here, and I was going to get in trouble as soon as that slack <coughs> excuse me, got used up. And if you hear, can you hear that little click, click, click? Mm -hmm. That's supposed to be that way because your fabric is so tight, it shouldn't give. Now I'm going to go this way. So I am going to turn my project around so that I can stitch towards myself. Again, I'm going to find my gauges. I'm going to put my thumb right below my gauges. That way I know where my beveled edge is. Is my hand in the way, Peter? No. This is a really good angle, though. 
is good. Good. I hope everybody can see. Now, so this you is... The, you can see the thread coming off the back. Oh, good, good. This is very relaxing. And, you know, sometimes you just feel like punching something. Especially right now in the, in the ways we're living with the masks and all the staying at home and all the things we're going through. It's kind of gratifying to punch and get a beautiful project after you're done punching. So, now look, my hand is over my thread. Mm, very bad, very bad. So I'm going to take my thread, make sure it stays loose. What happens if my thread does get caught? My loops won't stay in place. They'll pull out. Well, all I have to do is pull my thread down to the eye again and just repunch those areas. It's really hard to make a mistake in punch needle because it's very forgiving. If you make a mistake, look, you can just pull them out. And then you pull your thread down to the surface again and just start over. The fabric will condense back together. Then as you punch, you may not be punching in the same hole, it doesn't matter. Because the fabric is tightly woven and it's going to keep that little loop. Now let's look at the front. See the little loops that we're making? Can they see those? Uh -huh. And all we're doing is following the outlines with different colors. Usually a pattern will list the flosses on the back. There's lots of options with flosses. There's lots of options with uh, the height of your um, loops. Let's say, for instance, you want to do a really cute, woolly little sheep. And you want the sheep to stand out off of the background. Well, do the loops for the sheep longer than you do for the background, and the sheeps will take on a whole different look. They'll be fluffier, and it'll be so cute. What about a flower center? You know how fluffy a flower center can be? Make those loops a little bit bigger in the center. Make the flower loops a little bit shorter, and you, all of a sudden you've got a beautiful dimensional project. Now I'm going to go sideways again, but this time I'm going to go sideways. Last time I went that way, now I'm going to go that way, but it's the same principle. I'm going to just flip that gauge because I know my beveled edge is right below there and of course I always want my beveled edge to be the leader and my rounded edge to follow because that's where the threads coming from make sure that your tail is not caught on anything make sure there's no knots And voila, we've practically gone all the way around. Wow. <clears throat> it goes pretty quick. It does go pretty quick. Faster than cross stitch. <laughs> <laughs> Very much faster than cross stitch. Now the reason I don't have a mask on is because I'm in a room and it's just Peter and I. And Peter has his mask on. I have my mask on. But I didn't think maybe that I should uh, be able to try to talk clearly with a mask on. So we've come back into Lanine's office where all the hard work is done, all the bills get paid, you know that kind of thing when you have a business. It's very good lighting in here. I like it in here. Maybe I'll live in here. Um, you do want good lighting. And if you have a hard time seeing, you know we have those magnifying things that you can put on your head and magnify them and sometimes they have a light. I bet you cross stitchers know all about that. I don't do a lot of cross stitch anymore because my eyes are 60 years old. Oh no, now they're 62 years old. I'm getting ready to have a birthday. So 62 year old eyes, they need a little help. They need extra light. So make sure your light source is really good. We have all kinds of wonderful lighting gadgets out there on the floor. I love gadgets, don't you? So this needle punch thing, is just such a nice thing to start 
If you're looking for a new craft, if you're bored with your sewing machine for just a little bit, you can switch over to this. This kind of a big, huge project, I wouldn't say is good for traveling, but if you have a smaller project that you could just use this hoop in, it would be great for traveling, um, especially in the car. If you, I get car sick, but if you uh, can do things in the car like that, perfect for that. Um, it doesn't take much equipment at all. Like I said, the punch needle, it comes with the threader, so that's a set. You got your nice scissors. Now, if you don't want to invest in these crooked scissors, but let me show you how good they are. Let me show you. See, this is my tail. This is my tail. And look, can they see that, Peter? It gets right up there next to the surface. Now, at home, I have a little bowl that I put all my little scraps in. I don't save them or anything. But let me show you this. When I end, let's just say this is all filled in and I'm ready to be done with this section. I'm going to hold my finger right at the tip of the needle. I'm going to pull that out and I'm just going to snip that off. Now, I don't know if there'll be any on the front, but when I end, a lot of times, oh good, there is one. A lot of times when I end my stitch, the last little bit of floss sticks out on the top. This is where these bendy scissors come in handy. I just pull that up, go right to the surface, and look at that, clean as a whistle. Whew. I don't whistle that good. My dad can whistle. It's like, it's like shearing sheep. Yeah, 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 it's, it is like shearing sheep. Maybe you need a pair of these scissors for your <laughs> sheep. But I, I do love these scissors. But again, you can use straight scissors. Don't worry about that. But see how you can just tidy it up and see how pretty. I just love this. It feels good. And it's just fun. It's sort of like uh, rug hooking in a way, only on a much tidy, uh, tinier scale. You know how you punch uh, rugs? It's sort of like that. But punch needle. If you want to, come in, give it a try. We've got several patterns. We're just now growing our little section. We have uh, a few patterns, but we're going to be really investing in a lot of new fun patterns. And as soon as I get this sign done, maybe in a year or more, no, I'm just kidding. Um, as soon as I get the sign done, I'll be making more samples. And uh, so we look forward to seeing you. Come in and visit us. We have wool patterns galore that can be used for punch needle patterns. We've got the fabric by the bolt. Like I said, we've got the needle and the needle threader. We've got these fun little scissors and we've got the hoops. So this is the place to come if you want to do needle punch or punch needle, whichever way you want to say it. Have a good day.